Pick up your horror figures at Big Bad Toy Store at the link in the description. Pokemon, Kaiju, Dragon Ball, and more. It's Steven's Toy Reviews. Yeah, hello there collectors, it's Steven here and I'm bringing you another NECA horror figure review. Today we're going to be taking a look at NECA's Ultimate Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th Part 3, and then we're going to go ahead and throw 3D in there. Way back in 2012, NECA did two releases of a normal and battle damaged Jason Voorhees, and then threw them together with a couple extra accessories and released this Ultimate version of Jason. Upon its initial release, uh, some fans were a little bit lukewarm to this release due to uh, some questionable skin tone coloration and the fact that essentially by default he looks battle damaged but comes with a normal head as well as the default. Hmm. Yeah, but after a couple of reissues it seems like NECA was able to fix a couple of those things and uh... Yeah, they came a little bit better with engineering and improved the mask a little bit. So, we've come a few years since that ultimate release, and now we have a reissue on the market which you can buy. So, is this one going to be worth the purchase? Let's take a look to see whether or not everyone's favorite mama's boy is worth adding into your collection. So, for reference, I will be reviewing one of the newest reissues of the Part 3 Jason Voorhees figures. Now, the way that you're going to be able to tell this is that of recent, NECA decided to make the hang tags out of cardboard instead of the plastic ones. So, if you do get this and it does have the cardboard hang tag, you know that it's one of the newer reissues. That being said, I do remember back when this first came out, there were a lot of folks who were complaining about the skin tone being way too dark and mismatched from the head sculpt. And I do have to say, I'm not really seeing that problem here. Yes, he does look a little dark, but it's mostly because he does have a dark darker wash to him, and it does make the figure look really good. Um, yeah, he kind of looks dirty, and it looks like he's been, you know, trolling around in a bog. You know, Camp Crystal Lake, yeah, he looks fine. He looks like a dirty camper, and there's nothing wrong with that, nothing at all. I mean, go out and camp in a tent for a weekend. You're not going to look perfect. Anyway, the biggest flaw of this figure in the looks department, I'm going to have to say, is that um, by default, he is battle damaged, which... The default head sculpt is not battle damaged. So uh, there's blood on the neck, there's blood on the shirt, and there's blood on the pants, which um, there should not be for something that is neutral. So there's no real way to get around that, considering they do throw in the bloodied up head sculpt as well, which we're going to take a look in the accessory section. So we'll hold off on that view in a little bit. In this reissue, though, NECA did change up the mask just a little bit from the promo pictures and that the eye holes are a bit bigger, and it seems like they changed the overall shape. So I'm not really too familiar with all of the releases that NECA has done for Jason, but it seems like they may have just simply swapped one of the masks. But overall, it does look very nice, and it seems a bit more appropriate for this Jason. Taking a look at the head sculpt in and of itself, yeah, it does look pretty good. Again, it does look a little dark, but I personally don't think that this is really an issue. We are able to see the sculpt perfectly fine. No real problems here. Yeah, it looks good. So speaking of that blood application, it is a bit questionable for a default look of Jason, battle damaged, uh, neither here nor there. Uh, the application in and of itself does look pretty nice, and it doesn't actually bleed. <laughs> the, the paint application I'm talking about, not, not, not the blood. Anyway, it doesn't bleed over into the white undershirt of Jason. It looks good there. The application on the shirt itself looks fine. And then we do have some of the smaller details like the buttons, which we can actually see on the shirt going all the way from the bottom to the top. And we can, we can see that he, he's cool because he didn't button up the top button. So yeah, very good. Very good. Now we're going to go ahead and move on down to the pants, which this is a big controversy for those of you who are not in the know for the part three Jason design. Are his pants blue or are they brown? From what I've been able to see that they did actually have him wear blue pants in the movie, though in some shots it does look brown, though in some other pictures it's clearly brown, but I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of like Michael Myers is an original jumpsuit coloration. Was it green? Was it blue? Who knows? not blue anyway so for the pants colors if you wanted to be brown guess what they use brown dry brushing so this way you can pretend it's one or the other so good job to NECA there and then the boots we have some paint applications there to make it look good so overall for this Jason thumbs up I think it actually does look pretty good some folks don't but to be honest he's a camper so that dirt good job NECA Jason's articulation is a bit dated so 
Um. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just um go ahead and get a little bit more light on the subject there. You can see 2012 there. So it's 2020. The figure was even just recently reissued. So we're already fighting against time on this guy. So it was dated pretty much when the figure came to market. It's even dated by today's standards, but you can still get some fun poses out of this guy. So what are we working with? Well, the head plugs into the neck on a peg, and then there is a ball joint at the base. So we get some decent movement there. We can spin his head around. He can look up. He can look down. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Please note that um, he does seem to move underneath his shirt. It's not really so much a joint as it is just... Um, this shirt is just kind of like a sleeve, so there's that. Shoulders plug in on a swivel, raise and lower on a hinge. We do have swivels at the elbow, which work as a bicep swivel, since that's how the hinge plugs in. Hinge elbows, not a full 90 degree bend, but close enough. Ball jointed wrists. Both hands. We have a ball jointed waist, swivel, and hinge hips. Some folks report loose hips, so do keep that in mind. They also did not do any sort of paint on the joints, so some of you, that may bug you, but it is what it is. Thigh swivels, single hinge knees with swivels, and then I guess he's going to have ball jointed ankles, but they don't really move for me at all, so... Yeah, that's not that great. So uh, Jason's articulation is very much so dated. If it were to come out today, which I think they can go back and redo this ultimate <laughs> figure. Uh, easily, easy, easy, easy. Double hinge elbows. We can get another joint in the torso. Double hinge knees would be easy to do. Yeah, there are many improvements that could be done, but don't get me wrong. You can get them into some fun poses if you really wanted to. Accessories time. And yes, I do know that the figure is a bit old, but at the same time, there are a couple of basics here that I feel like NECA kind of dropped the ball on. So for accessories, we are going to get that battle damaged head, which looks good. We are going to get the battle damaged mask. And then for the weapons, we are going to get the harpoon gun. We're going to get the axe, machete. We're going to get the knife. We're going to get the wrench, which is not shown in this group shot because that actually popped out of the tray. And uh, I lost it for a little bit. We're going to get the fire poker and we're going to get the pitchfork, which is actually interesting. And when we get into the weapons, I'm going to tell you a little fun story about this. So taking a look at the battle damage stuff that we get with Jason. So for the mask, it looks pretty cool, except for one of the chevrons. It actually looks like one of the points there is uh, not fully applied and taking a look at it it seems like throughout the production run of this figure regardless of the reissue or issue of this figure uh, they did not actually have that fully applied there but if you take a look at some of the other designs of this Jason whether it's going to be from the movie stills or whatnot it's kind of inconsistent so I'm not quite sure whether or not this is an issue or not so since it's inconsistent it's essentially a non-issue so taking a look at the battle damaged head he's nice and bloody and it does look different than the default head sculpt so that is a plus there now we're going to go ahead and just have a nice little montage of all the weapons here and you can take a look at them the only critique that i have is that it's a mix and match between bloody and not bloody so the knife we have blood which one side of it is, the paint application is not very good the axe eh, it is what it is uh for the machete uh, there's tape on it and I wasn't able to get all the adhesive off and it actually has a little bit of a curve to it. So it's warped, but other than that, everything does look good of note in the promotional pictures, the machete is bloody and they changed that on the final product. So if you were expecting that, you're not going to get it here now about the pitchfork, which is a little bit different. So in the Friday, the 13th part three movie, when Jason goes to kill the character Loco, when he goes to actually stab Loco, you can see that there are five prongs to the pitchfork. However, once he actually sticks it into Loco, there are now four. So is this accurate? Yes and no, because the movie doesn't have consistency. So 
good job there. And they're in court because they apparently can't figure out who owns the rights to this movie because one's arguing over the other, so they can't even keep it consistent in the movie. So anyway, that's about all I'm going to talk about there. So again, to recap, we get the knife, we get the wrench, we get the fire poker, we get the pitchfork, we get the machete, we get the axe, and we get the harpoon gun. And I'm going to go ahead and close the box because I was looking at all the accessories while I was recording this section as I often do. Now normally for the box I don't talk about it but I'm just going to go ahead and talk about it here while we take a 360 spin view of Jason with the Camp Crystal Lake accessory set and you can check out my video on that as well. There's a lentacular uh, piece on the front so you can flip it back and forth and it looks like Jason's stabbing you. Pretty cool. Now what is an issue that I have with this release and admittedly it's older so they probably weren't thinking about that. The issue that I have is that there are no alternate hand parts so Jason has to hold all of his weapons with the right hand, and he can't hold it with the left. He can rest a weapon in his left hand, but he can't hold it with his left hand. And alternately, there are no splayed right hand parts. Why they didn't do this, I don't know. It's beyond me. It's kind of simple. By modern day action figure standards, he should be able to have that as an option. And that does affect some even recent Jason figures. So, NECA, come on, let's get with the times here, okay? Do another one, or maybe offer hand parts as an accessory option coming up also a royal pain getting the axe in the wound for Jason's head. Sometimes you have to remove the mask. It's, it's, it's kind of hard. Anyway, accessories are good. And of course, I do have an ultimate display video. So if you want more accessories for Jason, I can help you figure those out. Now we're going to go ahead and move on over to a size comparison so you can see just how big this Jason is. If you have some other horror figures or you want him to terrorize other figures you have. So, buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. This figure has been on the market for quite some time and has some recent reissues as well, which have sort of fi fixed some of the issues, but eh, not all the way for some folks. For about 30 or so dollars, I do think that this is pretty good, but if you're looking to spend primo money, then maybe you can look elsewhere. But at the end of the day, I do think it is a rather quality release, and fans of the character will be very very pleased. Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now that you've heard a lot from me, I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up thank you very much and now the end card should be popping up which will give you a few clickable links like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my patreon or some short urls like to my social media or to my teespring store there's also a video i hand selected for you so if you want to watch another str video i hand selected some good content for you to watch so definitely check out that video thank you again so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video